Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of May. Prime Minister Modi visits cyclone Ampan affected areas in eastern India. Pentagon report says Pakistan continues to harbor Taliban Haqqani network. And Bangladesh faces unprecedented Eid festivities amid coronavirus lockdown. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday visited cyclone Ampan affected West Bengal and Odisha provinces to review the situation. The Prime Minister announced an immediate assistance of 1000 crore rupees to West Bengal where the super cyclone killed at least 80 people. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday visited India's West Bengal to take stock of the post-cyclone Ampan situation in the province where at least 80 people lost their lives due to the natural calamity. The Prime Minister undertook an aerial survey of cyclone Ampan affected areas in West Bengal accompanied by Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. The duo were seen wearing face masks as they witnessed the devastation and flooding caused by the super cyclone. Modi later held a review meeting with the chief minister and other top government officials. He said the central government stands with West Bengal in these testing times and will provide immediate advance assistance of rupees 1000 crore. Abhi tatkal jo is sankat ki ghadi mein rajya sarkar ko kathinai na ho iske liye ek advance assistance ke roop mein 1000 crore rupiya Bharat sarkar ke taraf se Later in the day, Modi also visited neighboring Odisha province where the cyclone wreaked havoc in several coastal districts. Ampan originally started as a super cyclone from Bay of Bengal with wind speeds reaching over 230 km per hour, but it weakened after making landfall into a very serious cyclone as it moved inland through Bangladesh. The evacuation of some 3 million people before the cyclone struck undoubtedly reduced the number of deaths. The Reserve Bank of India on Friday announced a reduction in the repo rate to 4% from existing 4.4% in a surprise move to support the economy amid the coronavirus crisis. The Reserve Bank of India or RBI on Friday reduced the repo rate to 4% from the existing 4.4% and extended the loan repayment moratorium for another three months up to August 31st, citing the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. This is the second cut in the repo rate this year at which the central bank lends short-term funds to commercial banks. The move will allow commercial banks to make more rooms to lower the EMI burden for their borrowers. In a video addressed to the media on Friday, RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das said, economy is expected to remain in the negative territory in the current financial year due to the virus outbreak. On the quantum of reduction, the MPC voted with a 5 is to 1 majority to reduce the policy repo rate by 40 basis points. 40 basis points from 4.4% to 4%. The announcements on Friday were aimed at countering the fallout from the ongoing nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, which has pushed India's economy into a standstill, affecting businesses and landing hundreds jobless. The pandemic continues to surge in India. With the total number of cases now crossing the 110,000 mark, the death toll stands at 3,583. Moving on, amid nationwide lockdown to curb the spread of novel coronavirus, many in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have been forced to remain indoors, with traders and daily wage workers being worst affected. A trader blamed authorities for ineffective lockdown measures that has dropped them on their income. 
Since businesses remain completely shut amid the lockdown and no financial transaction has taken place over that period, traders in Pakistan-administered Kashmir stare at huge losses. Chairman of Markazi Anjumane Taziran, Shaukat Nawab Mir, alleged that no facilities, incentives or compensations for losses of businesses have been provided to the locals, especially the traders, after the COVID-19 lockdown was imposed. The lockdown has robbed the residents, including labourers and daily wage workers, of their daily income and they struggle to survive with no money, he said. जाना मुझ गले के ऊपर कि हमारे वजीर आजम ने लॉकडाउन का दर्दसीन बर्बाद किया लेकिन उसके मुतबादल जो इंतजाम करने थे उसके अंदर टोटली हमारी जो स्टेट है वो फेल हो गई है लिहाजा हमारा मुतालबा अपने वजी अजम से कि फौरी तौर पर जो है ये तमाम लोगों के मामला को जो है वो सामने रखते हुए डिसीन करें खास तौर पर ताजर जो है इस वक्त पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर हैज ऑलरेडी रिपोर्टेड वन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी एट कोरोना पेशेंट्स Poor testing facilities in the region are a cause of worry among the people as they fear the rapid spread of the virus in the community. The residents earlier alleged that Pakistan has left the people of Pakistan administered Kashmir at God's mercy and is not helping them in any way. News just in. A Pakistan International Airlines aircraft crashed in a residential area near the Karachi airport on Friday. The airline's spokesperson Abdul Sattar confirmed the crash and said that the flight from Lahore was carrying 90 passengers and 8 crew members. Ambulances and rescue officials had arrived at the scene to help residents in the densely populated area till the last reports came in. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan began a phased lifting of its countrywide lockdown last week despite a rising rate of cases. Businesses were allowed to reopen with measures such as social distancing and limits on the number of customers, but that move may be too late for many as the lockdown has deflated Ramadan sales for businessmen. It's difficult for Pakistani businessman and trader Muhammad Shabir Ahmed to sit in his home and sort through piles of unsold garments, stock he believes would have sold if not the country's coronavirus lockdown overlapping with Ramadan. The holy fasting month of Ramadan is traditionally the peak season for clothing retailers as many Muslims buy new clothes for their families to mark the festival of Eid al-Fitr and the end of Ramadan. After Pakistan began a phased lifting of its countrywide lockdown last week, businesses were allowed to reopen with measures. But that move may be too late for Ahmed, who says he is on the brink of bankruptcy. Our business that we have brought from there, from Malaysia, we have put some things in it. Let's see, we will see something in this year. We will develop it and we will do it. Because the Tajir, who is the clothes, is the clothes. उसको पूरी साल कोई सेल नहीं मिलती सिर्फ और सिर्फ रमज़ान के ऊपर वो डिपेंड करता है 50 परसेंट सेल उसकी रमज़ान में ही होती है बाकी 50 परसेंट सेल पूरा महीन पूरा साल काम करने के बाद आती है अहमद रिटर्न टू पाकिस्तान फ्रॉम मलेशिया टू सेट अप अ स्मॉल गार्मेंट फैक्ट्री एंड फोर शॉप्स इन द कंट्रीज कमर्शियल कैपिटल कराची बट द लॉकडाउन शटर्ड ही शॉप्स ही यूज टू हैव थर्टी एम्प्लॉयज एट हिस शॉप्स एंड फैक्ट्री नाउ ही हैज ओनली सेवन और एट वर्कर्स हु ही इज फीडिंग बट के नॉट एफोर्ड टू पे Pakistan's fiscal deficit will be significantly worse than projected this fiscal year with the fallout from the novel coronavirus pandemic pushing millions into unemployment and poverty according to government estimates. As of Friday, Pakistan recorded 50,694 infections and 1,067 deaths from the coronavirus. A quarterly report by Pentagon has stated that Pakistan continues to harbor militant groups including Taliban and the Haqqani network which maintains the ability to conduct attacks against Afghan interests. A quarterly report by the US Department of Defense to Congress released this week states that Pakistan continues to harbor the Taliban and associated militant groups such as Haqqani Network which maintains the ability to conduct attacks against Afghan interests. 
The Pentagon report says Pakistan likely views increased Taliban influence in Afghanistan as supporting its overall objectives and will seek to influence intra-Afghan peace talks in a direction favorable to Pakistan. It observes Pakistan's strategic objectives in Afghanistan continue to be countering Indian influence and mitigating a spillover of instability into its territory. The report comes nearly three months after the signing of the U.S.-Taliban agreement in Doha on February 29, which established a framework for the conditional withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan and the path towards intra-Afghan talks. It notes that Pakistan has encouraged the Afghan Taliban to participate in peace talks, but refrained from applying coercive pressure that would seriously threaten its relationship with the Afghan Taliban to dissuade the group from conducting further violence. In news from Sri Lanka, three elderly women were trampled to death on Thursday in a stampede during a cash handout in Sri Lankan capital Colombo. This comes amid growing desperation among Sri Lankans struggling to make ends meet during a coronavirus lockdown that has smashed the economy. At least three elderly women were killed and nine were injured in a stampede in the Sri Lankan capital of Colombo on Thursday, police said. The stampede occurred when a local businessman was handing out cash to the poor along with five of his associates on the eve of the last Friday before Eid. Maliga Vatta, a township in the capital where the incident took place, has a large Muslim population. Police said that the six suspects involved in the distribution of money have been arrested for flouting, coronavirus curfew and gathering crowds without taking precautionary measures. Currently, Colombo is under a 24-hour curfew to contain coronavirus spread, but essential public and private sector establishments such as government offices and shops are functioning. Sri Lanka has so far recorded 1,030 coronavirus infections with nine deaths. Cyclone Ampan has left behind a trail of destruction in Bangladesh's coastal areas affecting more than a million people. While restoration process is underway, villagers in Satkira district were seen joining hands to repair the broken water embankment that left their village flooded due to the cyclone. Cyclone Ampan has left behind a trail of destruction in the Bangladesh's coastal areas affecting more than a million people in several districts. According to an official report, the initial death toll was put at 10. However, local media reported that more than 30 people were killed. The powerful cyclone has left a village in Bangladesh's southwestern Satkira district flooded after part of a water embankment broke. Villagers could be seen trying to repair the broken water embankment on Thursday after the cyclone Ampan hit eastern India and Bangladesh on Wednesday. Ampan barreled in from the Bay of Bengal on Wednesday. A storm surge of around 5 metres caused flooding across low-lying coastal areas in eastern India and Bangladesh. It weakened after making landfall moved inland through Bangladesh. With only few days to go for Eid al-Fitr, the biggest festival for Muslims, there is no sign of the usual enthusiasm or the buzz in the markets across Muslim-majority Bangladesh due to the coronavirus lockdown. Shop owners said they are facing the brunt of losses with very few people buying traditional dresses that are worn during the celebrations. Eid preparations in the Bangladeshi capital Dhaka has changed this year amid an imposed lockdown due to the novel coronavirus. Bangladesh has been under lockdown since March 26 and this has been extended until May 31st, affecting the religious celebration, with fewer shops being allowed to open to curb the spread of the virus. Eid al-Fitr is a major festival in the Muslim calendar, signifying the end of the fasting month of Ramadan and is traditionally celebrated by tucking into a large feast with family members. আমরা চরম ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত তারপরও দোকান খুলেছি যাতে অন্তত আমাদের ক্যাশ যা ছিল সব তো শেষ অন্তত আমাদের এই পণ্যগুলো যদি ঠিক থাকে আল্লাহ সুবহানাহু ওয়া তাআলা হয়তো এই দিন রাখবে না যখন দিনগুলো ভালো হবে তখন আমরা এই পূজনি আবার নতুন করে জীবন যাত্রা শুরু করব 
Normally on the days near Eid, Bangladesh witnesses big congregations, but the shadow of coronavirus has made that impossible this year. Bangladesh as of Friday recorded a total of 28,511 cases with 408 deaths due to the deadly virus. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.